As you probably already know, I made a video about the Intel Compute Stick a while back, and that video exploded, hitting over 3,000 views, which was just insane. And in the comments, a ton of you, almost 200 people, asked me to try and store Linux on it. So today, that's exactly what we're doing. And just to clarify, the results are probably not what you're expecting. We're taking this tiny stick and trying to turn it into a mini Linux powerhouse. The plan is to load it up with Lubuntu, a fairly lightweight distro that should help squeeze every last bit of performance out of this little guy. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll find out if this pocket sized little computer can actually be useful running Linux. But before we dive into the install, let's quickly recap what we're working with. Under the hood, we've got an Intel Atom Z3735F. Not exactly a speed demon, paired with 2GB of memory. Storage wise, we've got 32GB of built-in EMMC storage. And yeah, some people said that even a micro SD card would be faster than the internal storage. So we're going to check that out in just a second. As for ports, we've got one USB 2.0 port and a micro USB port used for power. Yeah, this thing still needs external power, so I'm going to use my 12 watt Apple charging brick and it actually works just fine with this. There's also a micro SD card slot and of course the HDMI plug that pops straight into the back of your monitor. Super compact and super convenient. Now let's get this thing plugged in and see what we can turn this thing into. Alright, and I mean just starting things off, let's go ahead and plug in our 256GB micro SD card into the Intel Compute Stick. So here's the SD card, and let's pop this in. And there we go. It's quite a basic upgrade, but 256GB of storage is going to be a lot for this little thing. Now you're probably wondering what we're going to be doing with Lubuntu. Well first up we're testing Minecraft of course. We'll check both versions 1.11 and the latest version of Minecraft which I'm pretty sure is 1.21. And we'll even give Classic Cube a shot which is a lightweight Minecraft alternative built for older systems. Then we'll take a look at YouTube playback and see if it can handle that at all. We've also got some Dreamcast emulation lined up and we'll give Half-Life 2 a go. We ran Half-Life 1 in the last video and it actually did perform pretty well. So I'm curious as to how far we can actually push this into our Atom. Anyway, I've got my USB loaded up with Lubuntu, as you can see in the boot menu. So it's time to wipe Windows off of this thing. No hard feelings, but it was definitely holding us back. I still can't get over this boot logo. It's literally just basic calibre text. Like, come on Intel, at least put your logo on there or something. This just looks sad. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press install Lubuntu. And I'll see you guys once this finishes installing. All right, and we're in. So let me go ahead and log in. And let's see how the login speeds are from Linux compared to Windows. And yeah, that was a lot faster than Windows. Obviously, it's gonna, still going to be um, pretty slow. Obviously, keep in mind, we're using an Intel Atom, so things are going to be slow. But I mean, yeah, just using the operating system in general, it just feels a lot more snappier than Windows. But I mean, just opening apps and stuff, they just feel really fast, like... And the graphics aren't tearing that much, unlike Windows, where every single window would tear so badly. So the first thing I want to do is try and load up a YouTube video. So let's go ahead and hop into YouTube. It does feel a little bit choppy, of course. Once again, we're using an Intel Atom, so... But I mean, at least things are loading in now, unlike last time when we were using Windows. Things definitely do load in a lot more faster. So let's go ahead and search for a Waffle TM video. Let's try and watch the netbook video and see how- Okay, well we're at 720p and the entire system feels like it's crapping itself right now. And uh, playback is a little bit choppy, like I can definitely tell my hand is like stuttering a bit. It doesn't really show up on camera but my hand's tearing a lot. Alright, let's try 1080p and see if that works and by the way, this is on 720p. We're gonna try out 4k in just a sec. Alright, 1080p is just the same, a little bit more choppy. Alright, now let's try out 4K. If I'll be honest, I doubt it will even load. And yeah, I, I was correct, it's just not loading at all. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear the fans screaming right now on this Intel Compute Stick. Oh, oh my god, it loaded in. And it went away, okay. Alright guys, well that was um, YouTube playback. Definitely not the greatest. 
And now nothing's loading in. Um, I regret what I said before about how everything loaded in very quickly. It's just not responding now. Okay, well that was YouTube. Um, let's go ahead and try out Minecraft this time. We're gonna have to download it from the official website. And this is a Debian-based uh, distribution that we're using right here, Lubuntu. It's based off of Ubuntu, which is based off of Debian. So we'll download the Debian-based version of Minecraft. And let's see if that installs, because last time I tried this out in Lubuntu on my other machine, it missed a few dependencies apparently, or something like that. And we got an error saying, cannot satisfy dependencies. So I tried using sudo apt install to install Minecraft on this thing, and um, now it does seem to be working. So, I mean, just for future reference, if you wanna try and get Minecraft running on Lubuntu, definitely use sudo apt install. And hey, it seems to be done. So in the game section, there should be the Minecraft launcher. There we go. Okay, and I'll just let it do its thing. And we're in the Minecraft launcher all logged in. So we're gonna download the latest release, which is 1.21. All right, and after waiting for about five minutes for the game to install, we're finally in. I'm telling you guys, the Wi-Fi on this thing is absolutely terrible. It downloads at like a maximum of one megabyte per second. All right, so I mean, on the main menu, things are already lagging. Like things are tearing like insane and like, there's a lot of latency. All right, so let me just go ahead and use the lowest settings possible. We use five chunks of render distance. Uh, and we'll keep the FPS at a maximum of 90 because the thing is tearing enough and we kind of need like VSync. We'll put down the mipmap levels because those definitely do have an impact on performance. And we'll keep the particles as decreased and we should be good to go. That surprisingly didn't take that long to generate, but um, things are not looking great right now. Like, I can literally hear the fan behind this gigantic monitor. Okay, well, it's not really a gigantic monitor. I meant gigantic monitor as in the uh, width of the monitor. But I mean, despite that, this thing is not so happy right now. I'm obviously not going to compare this to Windows because in Windows we ran 1.11, which we are going to do in Linux in just a moment. But I am surprised it even loaded modern day Minecraft, knowing how heavy modern day Minecraft actually is. Okay, well, the FPS panel is decreasing the performance drastically. Like, let me just show you. If I disable this, if I turn it off, the game goes back to normal. So I can't even keep an FPS counter on because that literally decreases the performance. But um, let's go ahead and check out Minecraft 1.11 because I definitely hope it performs a lot more better in that version. All right, let's go ahead and load up that exact same world that we were in, in Minecraft 1.11. Right, and in Minecraft 1.11, things are a lot more playable. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that things feel a lot more smoother than Windows. And we can actually play with the FPS counter run. So I mean, in Windows, we averaged around 15 to 25 FPS, and in Linux, we got pretty much double that. We usually average around 30 to 35 FPS, I'd say roughly. Now, when it comes to loading chunks, things are obviously gonna be uh, pretty hectic in terms of frame rate. Like, things are definitely gonna uh, start disappearing and lagging, like, right now. Like, half of this map is gone for some reason. But I mean, on an Intel item, you can't really ask for more because things like this are gonna happen. Right, now let's go ahead and try out Classic Cube, which should perform even more better. So Classic Cube isn't exactly Minecraft, like official Minecraft. But I mean, Classic Cube and Minecraft are pretty similar to each other, so let's see how that runs. All right, so I've got Minecraft installed. I'll let this download the font. All right, and we're in, and so far, things are looking really good. Like, it is silky smooth, like, everything loaded in, like, instantly. And we're averaging a solid 59 FPS, which, I mean, it's pretty close to 60, so... It, this performs a lot more better than Minecraft. You're not getting the original Minecraft experience, but... If you're not really into that type of stuff and you just want a game similar to Minecraft to run on your Intel Compute Stick, this would be a good game for that. And... We're in. It took roughly half an hour to download the entire game since it was downloading at like 2 megabytes per second. Um, and wow, first impressions, the um, game is performing like dog crap right now. Like, look at that poor Combine soldier, he's running at like 1 FPS. I think setting down the graphics would definitely help. So let's go ahead and put down the resolution to 1280 by 720 and I'll just put everything down. So let's put the model detail down the texture detail and the shader detail, that should really help. And same thing with the anti-aliasing and the filtering mode. 
And yeah, we're pretty much done with the graphics settings, so hopefully that improves the performance. Alright, so let's go ahead and load up a game. I'll just load up my previous save that was playing on my my MacBook. And first impressions, um, the game is tearing a lot and it is stuttering like mad for some reason. But when it doesn't stutter, it does run pretty well. Like, let me show you guys how much FPS we're getting. So let me just run this command. Okay, well that was not so helpful, um, but like the FPS counter is really small, but like it says that we're running around like 40 to 50 FPS, even at the lowest settings. Now, if I recall correctly, they definitely did update the Source Engine version. So I'd imagine that if we ran like the original Half-Life 2 from the uh, Orange Box disc, the game would definitely perform a lot more better since it's running on the um, original Source Engine. Because like, 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 I mean, just look at this, like everything is just really stuttery right now. But, I mean, regardless, I'm still surprised that it even ran. So let's go ahead and try out some Dreamcast emulation on Redream. And of course, we're going to try out Sonic Adventure 2 because, once again, that is my favourite game. And it also just so happens to be on the Dreamcast, so let's go ahead and try that out. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And we'll do one- whoa. Okay, I do not know if you saw that glitch. Um, the UI was like... It was like all black for some reason, I don't know what happened there. Alright, see so escape. Let's see how the performance is. So, so far, no, okay, I was just gonna say so far, no issues, and the game decides to stir at that point. I mean, the game is smooth, like, it runs at a solid 60 FPS, but it's definitely stuttering quite a lot. Okay, I think it's okay now, like, it's still tearing a little bit, I don't know why it is with the Intel Atom graphics. This thing just loves to tear, like, in games and just, like, windows in general. But um, for a little um, emulation machine, this thing wouldn't be so bad if you installed something like Bazite on the, or maybe like RetroArch. Um, if you want to see that, definitely let me know. We can turn this thing into a little emulation beast, and that'd be like really cool to check out. So I mean, only started for that kind of like small section of the game, but um, I mean, so far though, like it's not lagging as much. So I mean, yeah, it's pretty much it for uh, Dreamcast emulation. It's very short. But I just want to showcase performance because I mean in Windows it did run but it was definitely quite a bit stuttery and like it was really laggy. It's literally cured the lag in the emulation so. So I mean once again if you want to see me make a video about emulation with this um, small compute stick in a distro like Bazite maybe, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll check it out. But um, yeah that's pretty much it for this. So in conclusion. Did Linux save this thing, and is it really a mini Linux powerhouse? Well, it is far from a powerhouse with that Intel Atom. I know I've said Intel Atom a bunch of times in this video, but you have to keep in mind that this thing is using an underpowered mobile chip. It is absolutely terrible for modern day usage. Unless you turn this thing into an emulation machine, which we'll be definitely doing in a future video, this thing is absolutely useless. You could always use it for digital signage though, which is pretty much what these were used for back in the day. But for daily usage, this thing absolutely sucks, and I'd avoid this thing at all costs. And as for Linux, Linux definitely saved this thing, and definitely put in a lot more usability, and it even... And it even gave it... Oh my god. And it even gave it a performance increase. As we saw there in the performance, overall this thing kind of got double the performance with Linux. In things like Minecraft, Dreamcast emulation and overall operating system usage. It definitely did perform poorly on the web though, for like web usage. But um yeah, definitely avoid these things at all costs. And if you need something cheap for under 50 bucks, just get a ThinkPad. Those things will literally save you a bunch of time and money. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you liked what you saw, then definitely consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Feel free to join the Discord server too. I'll leave that in the description below. Bye!